X's and O's on the KFAN Minnesota Vikings radio network is in the air and uh, we welcome you to the TCO studios with uh, Minnesota Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell. I'm Paul Allen and the Vikings take on the LA Chargers this weekend. The show's courtesy of the Minnesota Lottery and uh, by golly anything can happen when you say I'm in. With the new Vikings scratch game you can win $100,000. I'm in. Learn more at mnlottery.com. Dalton Reisner, new offensive lineman for the Minnesota Vikings. This, this uh, is astounding to me. Uh, 62 starts, uh, 3,900-ish snaps, including special teams. Only seven penalties against him in four years. And I know he messed up his UCL in his left arm, but you're not asking him to pitch game one of the World Series. So... How, why, how was he available, and how do you think he can help? Yeah, I uh, have always had a lot of respect for Dalton as a player. Um, we have some coaches here who have coached him in the past, uh, you know, Chris Cooper and Justin Riscotti. Uh, Curtis Modkins were all around him in Denver. Um, basically, you know, going back a, a pretty long way now, we had kind of identified Dalton as a, a potential addition to our team. Uh, we're always looking for ways uh, to possibly promote competition, see if we can get the, you know, what, what that best five looks like can mm -hmm. look a lot of ways. Uh, we know having Christian Derrissaw and Brian O'Neill at the tackle spot gives yep. us kind of pillars outside. Um, and, and with Garrett's injury kind of right now being a little bit of an unknown, and then we lose Ole, uh, it, it provided us with, a, I never want to call it an opportunity, but yep. Um, it provided a real path to being able to add a player like Dalton with his versatility. He, I know where he's played uh, predominantly his whole career, but you know, you talk to him and he's very smart, um, capable of playing multiple spots. And, and anytime you can add right. a player with this kind of experience at this right. point in the season, um, credit to Kwesi and, and his staff for, for getting that done. And uh, can't wait to get him going. Yeah, and, and again, I'm not trying to make the guy sound like a combo between Steve Hutchinson and Randall McDaniel. However, and I also know when you sign somebody into the season and they're on the roster week one, it's guaranteed the whole yeah. year. But you just don't generally see numbers like that available. Yep. So welcome to the Covenant, Dalton Reisner. Uh, your take give being minus six and your points differential right around that number. I got to be honest with you. I, I you just don't see take gives at a, at a number that are by a points differential yeah. really at any part of the season. You don't see that too often, no, do you? No, and I think, uh, you know, after two weeks and, and not getting the results that we've wanted here, I, I think it would be easy uh, for us to look at some of those numbers. I mean, I think, you know, we've lost by a combined nine points in the plus six turnover differential. Uh, those, that's pretty... Uh, historical as far as the difference between uh, that number. Uh, normally, if you're 0-2 with a plus 6 turnover, or minus 6, I should say, uh, turnover differential, you're looking at losing games uh, and, and really not even being competitive. I think it's been a, a credit to certain phases of our team being able to try to overcome, but uh, quite honestly, we've just set ourselves behind, missed some scoring opportunities at some critical moments uh, that, that whether it's at the end of the first half, two straight weeks, we've had uh, a turnover basically inside the one yard line with an mm -hmm. interception in week one. And then the unfortunate, you know, explosive by JJ down to the pylon. And, and uh, you know, you watch a lot of games this week, MPA. You see a lot of people reaching the ball out at the pylon and yeah. being patted on the back for it, winning games in Detroit. Uh, you know, maybe uh, even last, you know, watching the, some of the games Monday night. Um, it's just one of those things where when it happens, you coach it, you talk about it, but these guys are ultimate competitors. But when you think about those kind of flips that have happened in the game, whether Tampa Bay, being able, you, you could be up 17-3 at half, you're yeah, not. That's crazy. Um, you know, Philadelphia could be up 14-10 on the road even after uh, two, two, uh, two turnovers in that football game. So uh, the way I look at it, uh, we cannot seek comfort in using those as excuses. Uh, we have to find the way uh, to acknowledge what has happened as our reality because that is the honest truth. That is what we are as a football team. Yeah. Um, but we can also acknowledge um, that if we can do things just a little bit better, coach them a little bit better, emphasize certain things, actually able to get back on the practice field this week, um, 
my hope is that we can start playing a little bit cleaner, uh, getting back to the principles of our football philosophy, which is being all about the football, being situational masters, not only at the end of games, um, but how about the end of the first half, into the second half, that middle eight that we've really struggled in, which um, you know are very, very important to how you need to win when you're playing complimentary football. It all comes together. Uh, and I, I just view it as adversity hits for teams at different times. Uh, mm. It seems to be uh, absolutely warranted, but uh, you know it can feel a little bit of a panic when it happens the first two weeks of the season instead of in week 10 or 12 or 14. Um, we've got to acknowledge that. We've got to stand up man for man in this building, and everybody's got to do just a little bit more, coaches and players, and, and we're going to be okay. Well, it's, and it's unfortunate that the details of everything you just laid out are the reason you're 0-2. I mean, I know it's a detail-oriented game, and you can be like, yeah, but on defense this happened and this happened, and Brandon dropped it on the punt. But, but, I mean, a minus six with all these fumbles and you're set and, and where you were setting up shop <laughs> on some of these to do, to do some damage, I mean, it's just very unfortunate. Yep. And the, the overarching point here, it, that's the overarching point, but you, you, Kirk's game at Philly was so good, yeah. you know, and you, you've obviously watched a lot of him, coached him in multiple places, but what did you think of his game on yeah, Thursday I thought he night? Yeah, I thought he played outstanding and just his ability – uh, to continuously drop back and, and whether it was play pass, whether it was some of the keeper game, um, getting a rhythm and then some of the plays he made on third down, seeing the coverages, hey, they're doubling Justin, let's work this side. Uh, or, you know, we've got a plan for the double to Justin where he's going to win versus that. Um, and his ability to just let his back foot hit, he played real grounded throughout the whole night decisive with his decisions, accurate. Mm. Um, I thought he was outstanding. And, and I, I think based upon his two games of inventory, I think there's you know, some plays here or there uh, that Kirk would tell you I'd love to have back. But um, how he's played has been a winning formula for us. We just haven't won football games because of a lot of things outside of Kirk's control. And, and that's where we got to do a better job around him. Um, you know, we're, We've played eight linemen through basically eight quarters at this point, hoping to solidify that a little bit, not only bringing Dalton in, but getting CD back. We'll see where Garrett's at as the week progresses. So I think, you know, if we've been able to weather this storm, now we've got to go produce and, and find a way to win against a really good team at U.S. Bank. KOC, your, um, uh, your players and coaches, and, and for, for me, this would include you, seem to have a high level of vulnerability. And, and, and what I mean is, like, whether it's a practice or during the game, the chest taps of, like, that's me. Yep. That's on me. That's yep. my bad. Well, I mean, that's a wonderful quality for people to have, specifically in such a, a, a violent, physical, high-energy, fast-type career, you know? Yeah, I think it, it all comes back to what we're trying to build here. It's got to be something um, that uh, your culture leads you through, uh, some of these tough times that will inevitably hit. Um, I think it's always important to build a culture around looking inward first, um, out of that personal responsibility you have uh, to your teammates, to your players, if you're a coach. And, and obviously, I feel uh, so incredibly fortunate to have the group that we have, um, just knowing that sometimes um, you got to coach these guys hard. You got to let them know the truth. You got to let them know exactly uh, what's transpired that they could do better, but it always starts. Uh, with that vulnerability of being able to say, hey, guys, this is on me or this is what I need to do better. Um, and I think our leadership responds to that. I think our young guys respond to our leadership of our team. And uh, I know one thing, this team's going to compete like crazy. Um, and, and when, uh, you know, that minus six number, we've got a goal right now to try to get that back to zero as soon as possible. What's that look like? You can't turn it over and you got to force turnovers on defense. Get that number back to zero. And uh, we'll take a look at the box scores after that. And over the course of an entire season, I have a, a lot of confidence that we're going to get to that place. X's and O's on this Wednesday evening with Kevin O'Connell, head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, courtesy of the Minnesota Lottery. It, there's a lot on J.J.'s plate, isn't there? I mean, like, like it, well, it's just there have been a couple of times early in the season where we've seen Kirk had to, like, put him into a right spot and, and with the play clock running down. And, and just my initial thought is, to get him open and move him around, holy cow, it's voluminous, isn't it? Yeah, every every single uh, game, you know, even calling it sometimes, you're 
uh, as we put the plans together, it's all built upon what we see when he's in certain places and how do we make it so that it's just a, you know, a press go for the players. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's kind of the challenge a lot of the times is we're not always going to see the exact same JJ plans. Uh, there's, we've basically, we're two for two seeing uh, kind of a unique, different approach to how they want to play against him. I thought what he handled the other night in Philly, um, he, we moved him a lot, we motioned him a lot. Um, running a lot of different kind of route stems that kind of start out looking the same to the defense that are different. Yeah. Um, and his just ability to play fast and explosive um, is, is just world class. And what it does when we can protect the quarterback and, and try to give J.J. a chance to get down the field, um, it opens things up for everybody else. It opens things up for T.J. and potentially Jordan working the other side of the field, down the field like it's happened a couple times so far. Um, and then ultimately trying to just make sure we're doing everything we can to limit the stress of those guys up front because it's a challenge. Every team you play in this league seems to have pass rushers. I mean, really, we had two straight weeks of mm -hmm. uh, really interior issues to go along with those outside backers, uh, those defensive ends that yeah. both those teams had. And this week will be no different with Mac and Bosa. And then they've got some real talented guys inside. Um, now, how about uh, that Chargers two-point hit? to the offensive lineman, Trey Pipkins. Yep. I, I don't, I'm sure you saw it. Uh, in the second quarter of the Titans game, yep. Trey, Trey Pipkins, Apple Valley High School, by the way, your friend Brandon Staley, he, um, he has some tricks up his sleeve, doesn't he? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I have so much respect for Brandon. We've coached together. We've, we've known each other for a long time now. And um, I think he's a great coach. I really, I really do. And I think him going out and adding Kellen Moore, who's another guy I have so much respect for, building offenses that have, uh, really, uh, you know, all that he's ever done has been successful as a play caller and an offense builder. Um, so that's a combination. That's a heck of a combination when you think about schematics on offense and defense. So we've got a challenge as a staff this week. Um, I know Flo and I feel the utmost respect for kind of those counterparts on the other side. And we've got to deliver plans to our players that give them a chance to, you know, combat not only what we've seen on tape, but where we think they may go with their particular side of the ball. Kevin, is, is it fair to say Brandon is one of your best friends, if not your best friend in football and your families are very close? Yeah, he's, uh, he's right up there. We both got to L.A. at the same time. We both, you know, obviously coaching there and then he – uh, he takes off to the other team in LA, and uh, you know I get I got to hang back with Sean for another year it's before. Like brother versus brother. Here. That's it's it's what it feels like at times. Yeah. You know we're both so competitive and. Uh, we both want to win so badly, um, but it always comes back to the respect factor of knowing what, it, what he works like, knowing what uh, type of preparation he puts into games. And uh, yeah, our families, our kids, our wives are very, very close. We always see each other in the off seasons and uh, that won't ever change. But as I know Brandon's doing as we speak, uh, he's trying to do everything he can to come in and get a win. And we're trying to do everything we can mm. uh, to get our first win. And it's going to be as competitive as you can imagine on Sunday. And, and KOC. See, uh, you guys keep losing at the wire by a nose, and we know the details to the reasons there. We talked about it with the Gibbs. Well, they keep taking dirty losses at the wire. That Miami loss was, um, I mean, excuse me, the Tennessee loss was yeah. unbelievable. What? So what are some things that they're doing well? Yeah, well, I, I think offensively everything goes through the quarterback, and there's very few quarterbacks in this league that I think are you know, at Justin Herbert's level of just the overall awareness, how he runs that offense, gets them in and out of plays, you know, into premier looks and, and then just purely throwing the football, big, tall, strong, um, commands the field, sees the whole field. He's tough. He'll stand in there um, and make some unbelievable throws and, uh, you know, in the face of pressure, they've got the skill players across the board, you know, to go along with some pretty experienced guys up front. Yeah. Uh, defensively, <laughs> you know, I just think, um, they've kind of been working through some injuries here and there, but, uh, you know, Mac and Bosa, uh, I don't know if you can have two better, you know, core foundational players out on the edge as far as guys that have done it for a long time in this league. Um, and then they feel, it, it feels like a fast team. It feels yeah. like uh, they fly around, they play hard. Um, so really, uh, really diving in on the why behind them being 0-2, I'm sure they would have, you know, details, you know, honed in on why that's happened. Um, but games are going to be close in this league. They always are. Um, Got to find a way to win those in the end. I expect this game to be close this weekend. And, and, and our plan uh, is to prepare our guys to be at their best when they need to be to go get our first win. Last one, Coach, and we thank you for the time. Uh, Vikings and Chargers, noon KFAM this weekend. Uh, two into it. 
yeah, the, the team's long run is nine. So, so what plays into that, and, and should it be much higher? Well, I think there's been some examples where, you know, we could we could have a little bit more there, um, but it comes down to 11 guys doing their job. We got a chance over this past weekend to really dive into our run game, uh, take a look at it in each individual run, then get to do that with the players and, and kind of express mm. exactly what we need to have happen, whether it's uh, a little bit more physical in some spots or whether it's making sure we've got great hat placement at the second level to turn that three or four yard run hopefully into eight to ten or maybe even more. Um, we got to give Alex and Ty a chance to get going a little bit before they're you know seeing their first contact and um, both the Buccaneers and the Eagles historically uh, since Todd Bowles and, and really that the, a lot of that personnel on defense for the Eagles, if anything, they've just added younger pieces yeah. to, to go along with Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham and some of those guys. We knew in those games uh, there'd be some tough downs, but we do want to run the football. Um, we do want to move the football and, 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 and find a way to score points, and we've got to commit to it, but we've also got to understand uh, that we've been pretty darn explosive throwing the ball and how we marry all that together and build an offense for each individual Sunday is what we're working towards as coaches to give our guys the best possible chance. I appreciate you. Good yeah, luck. Thank you. Kevin O'Connell, head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, and I'm Paul Allen. Chris Rump, defensive line coach around the corner on X's and O's on the KFAN Minnesota Vikings radio network and Vikings.com.